Hi everyone, Dr. Bomb Stark again. Um, this is a pretty short video. We're just going to uh, quickly talk about how we represent uh, characters using binary and, and also hexadecimal uh, type data. The first thing we need to talk about is um, ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, -I. stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Um, this is the long, very, very long in the tooth, long running character set um, that, uh, you know, most computers have, have, have adopted as of, you know, many, many years ago. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very standard set. Um, it's actually 128 characters. So it is a seven bit um, binary sequence uh, or hex um, that is used to map to the characters we see on the screen. Um, and that includes letters, uh, numbers, punctuation, control characters, seems so some things there uh, you can't see that uh, have effects on the screen like, like line feeds. Um, there are 8-bit uh, ASCII uh, character sets that are compatible with the 7-bit ones, but the, uh, the upper 128 to 255 characters, we don't pay any attention to those for right now. Um, in the early days, uh, ASCII was often a 7-bit uh, thing where the 8th bit was used for error checking when it was um, these characters were sent across uh, networks uh, from mainframes to terminals. So some examples here, um, the uppercase Q is hex value 51, uh, lowercase Q is hex value 71. So right away we see there's a difference between uppercase and lowercase. Um, this is why case makes a, is important in a lot of programming languages. Um, we have the numeral 5, not the number 5, but the character that looks like a 5 is... Um, hex value uh, OX35 in ASCII. Uh, here's a punctuation uh, example for at uh, is, is hex 40. Um, here's an example of a control character. Uh, we're, uh, this is what we call a line feed, also known as LF, uh, which you have probably seen in 1301 as the uh, backslash N control character, and that is hex value 0A. And if you look around, um, in fact, it's probably linked here. Yep. Maybe I can get it in frame. Here we go. For example, this page, um, which is linked in your in your presentation, has the decimal octal hex and binary codes for all of the uh, ASCII characters. And we can see there's some punctuation, here's numbers, uppercase, lowercase, and so forth. Um, if we go all the way to the top, you'll, you'll see things like um, your line feed, um, horizontal tab, uh, backspace, um, several other things, including um, the interesting bell in the old uh, terminals uh, that, that used ASCII. The bell character rang a bell. You know, we don't see that much anymore, but it's still there for um, backwards compatibility purposes. Um, another one you'll see, um, especially when you start looking at C and C++ programming, is the null, uh, which is uh, value zero. Um, strings in C and C++ must end in a null character, uh, or bad things will happen. Back to the, pro to the slides. Okay, so uh, kind of building on that, let's look at a C style string. So I have an example with uh, an I character, a space, a less than, a three, another space, capital C, lowercase ats, and then a exclamation uh, mark. Um, so here are the characters listed out. And here are the hex codes associated with each one, including what I just said, the null that comes at the end. So this looks like it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten characters in it. Really, it has 11 if this is a C style string uh, because we include the null. All that together, we have a hex representation, which is just the concatenation of all these hex values. So if you had a text file with 
uh, all these characters in it, you could open that up in a hex editor and you would see this hexadecimal. Um, other character sets, um, I'm sure you've heard of Unicode. Uh, this is our modern character set. Um, it is a 21-bit long character set. Um, and if you do the math, that means you get a lot of possibilities for characters. Um, and it has characters for multiple languages. So it's uh, unlike ASCII, it's, it's not English centric. Um, there are many more languages incorporated into it. Uh, uh, it has a lot more things like math symbols and punctuation. Uh, and of course, you, you've probably seen that there are Unicodes for things like emojis and several other kinds of pictures. Um, when, with Unicode, we like to talk about the code point. Uh, this is its uh, numerical value within the overall Unicode set. The code point is not how we store a Unicode value. Um, we, we store them using something called an encoding. Um, and we have several, uh, including UTF-8, which is an 8-bit encoding, um, where each character is encoded as 1 to 4 8-bit numbers. Um, UTF-16, um, each character is encoded as either one 16-bit number or two 16-bit numbers. And then there's UTF-32, uh, where each character is encoded as a single 32-bit number. Uh, effectively, UTF-32 uh, each character is encoded as its code point. Um, one thing to talk, to mention here is that Java uh, chars are UTF-16. So um, whereas if you played around with C, a char is a single byte. In Java, a char is two bytes. Um, so you have to, if you're trying to convert from one to the other, it's not a, it's not quite as straightforward as you would think. Um, some other character sets, both of these are pretty outdated. Um, Petsky uh, is a, a character set that was used on Commodore computers. I only mention that because the, the architectural, uh, the hardware simulator we're going to use later is actually simulating a Commodore computer. Um, the other one is, is called Ebc Dick. This was um, a, a character set used on IBM mainframes. Um, at one time, IBM was you know, pretty much the leader, especially in enterprise uh, data processing. Um, so because of that, uh, Ebc Dick was a, a very widespread character set. Um, not so much anymore, but you may, you may, may see it uh, elsewhere. Um, last thing, since we talked about Unicode, let's uh, just show briefly how we can do some, uh, some encoding. Uh, this is for the character that looks like fire. Um, its code point is listed as U plus 1F525. So the 1F525 is a unique number that identifies this character within the Unicode set. Here are the different encodings though. If you encode it as UTF-8, um, it comes out as F0, 9F, 94, A5. So it is a four byte uh, UTF-8 encoding. Um, UTF-16, it comes out as D8 3D DD25, so it actually takes a um, it takes two 16-bit uh, values to encode it, uh, and then in UTF32, as I said before, that really is just a an encoding um, that mirrors the code point. Um, the question comes up: Well, why don't we just in, encode everything as UTF32? Um, and the answer is that we can be more efficient. Um, with our character sets if we do so uh, using UTF-8 or UTF-16. Um, UTF-8, in the worst case, you have four bytes, but some of them actually have um, as, as few as a single byte. So if, uh, in particular, with uh, in Unicode, the first 128 characters of Unicode are the ASCII set. So if you're doing most of your work in ASCII characters, it makes sense to do UTF-8 because you, you're actually saving your, yourself a lot of bytes um, that you would just be wasted here in the first uh, three bytes of UTF-32 if you were doing that. So you could potentially have a, a, a you know text that is uh, a quarter the size of of um, of it's if you did it in UTF-32. Uh, similarly for 16, it's kind of a 
moderation between these two extremes. There are situations where you could have two byte characters versus four byte characters. So again, you could save some space depending on your application. Um, one thing we will see uh, pretty soon is I will have you um, writing the code to do some Unicode um, encoding and maybe decoding uh, in these various um, uh, encoding schemes. All right, that's it for today. Again, if you have questions, please uh, let me know.